There is a reason why you keep failing your coding interviews. Well, a few reasons. And in this video, I'm going to share all the mistakes you've probably been making. Every software engineer has failed a coding interview at some point, some more than others. I remember when I first started out, I faced constant failure and rejections. That was about five years ago. And as a self-taught programmer trying to break into the tech industry, it was nothing but an uphill battle for me. I remember studying 12 hours a day, learning about data structures and algorithms, and the end result was always the same. We have decided to move forward with other candidates. I just couldn't catch a break. Eventually though, after dozens of interviews, I was finally able to land a role as an iOS developer at a startup. That barely paid me anything. Then another year later, I got what I considered my first real programming job. While it took me a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to get my first tech job, it doesn't have to be like that for you. You see, after failing countless coding interviews, I was able to learn a thing or two about failure. And if you stick to the end of the video, you'll learn exactly what not to do in a coding interview. In any case, I want to break this video into two sections. First are the tips on how to practice, and then the tips you can employ for the actual coding interview itself. So let's first look at some tips for practicing more effectively. So the first reason why most people fail their coding interviews is that they don't practice like they're in an actual interview. Let me explain what I mean by this. You see, there are many things to consider, but one of the biggest things I see people doing is going on a platform like LeetCode and solving a bunch of easier hard questions. On the surface, this seems fine, but in reality, unless you're going to an entry-level job or internship interview, you're probably not going to be asked an easy question. On the other hand, people think all the big companies ask hard questions. And while yes, some do, it's not as common as you think. What you should be doing is focusing on medium difficulty questions, as these are the most likely to be asked during an interview. And that's where most of your practice should be. I recommend you focus at least 60% of your practice time on medium questions, 30% on easy, and 10% on hard. You still want to do easy problems to work your way up to more difficult problems, but beyond that, your practice should be centered around medium difficulty questions. If you want a more structured study plan, then I recommend doing the top interview questions on LeetCode. It seems to have a pretty good distribution of problems that cover a wide variety of topics. In any case, another thing most people neglect doing when practicing for their interviews is voicing their thoughts out loud. Think about it, you can't stay silent during a coding interview. You have to keep the interviewer on the same page. So why should you practice any differently? When practicing, just imagine there's someone right next to you and explain how you're thinking of approaching the given problem. The worst thing you can do is to stay quiet during an interview. So voicing your thoughts out loud is great practice. But sometimes getting started is the hardest part. How can you voice your thought process if you have no idea how to solve the problem? That's where asking clarifying questions comes into play. Again, when practicing, you'll probably be alone, but don't let this deter you. Ask questions out loud about the input, output, error handling, and edge cases. Some examples could be, could the input be a negative number or zero? Is the input an integer or could it be a floating point number? Is there any upper or lower limit? An added benefit of asking clarifying questions is that it also helps you think deeper about the problem. I found it easier to solve problems on my own while practicing just by doing this. And the last tip I wanted to mention is to time yourself. It's unrealistic to spend two hours solving a leak code easy problem. In a real interview, you'll have about 45 minutes to solve a problem. If you practice with this time restriction, then you can better prepare yourself by thinking under pressure. All right, so those are some tips you can implement when practicing for coding interviews. Now it's time to talk about some tips you can use during the coding interview. First up, let's talk about solving problems without a plan. I see a lot of inexperienced engineers walk into interviews and just completely freeze up because they have no idea how to solve a problem under real world pressure. In moments like these, it pays to have a plan to follow. Luckily, there is a proven problem solving formula you can follow and it's one that I've used to great effect. First, you must start with a brute force solution. It doesn't have to be pretty. In fact, your initial solution will be inefficient, but this isn't a bad thing. Remember how I said earlier that you need to keep the interviewer on the same page as you? Well, this is part of that process. They get to see how you break down and solve the problem. Brute force solutions give you something to work with and increase your understanding of the problem. This then leads to the next step, which is finding bottlenecks. A bottleneck is just a part of the algorithm that doesn't run as efficiently as the other parts. By identifying a bottleneck and improving it, you can then increase the overall runtime efficiency of the problem. 
Common bottlenecks are nested loops, recursion, sorting, and many more. Really anything that contributes to a high runtime or space complexity in a problem is considered a bottleneck. Once you've identified the bottleneck, you can work on improving the solution to get to the final answer. While following this formula will help your problem solving significantly, it's also important to not reinvent the wheel. Unless you're explicitly told not to, don't be afraid to use built-in sorting functions or data structures. At the end of the day, you're not being tested on your knowledge of these tools, you're being tested on your ability to solve the problem efficiently. But still, if you make use of a built-in function or tool, you should at least have some understanding of how it works in the off chance the interviewer asks you to implement it from scratch. In the same vein, I encourage you to make use of helper functions. This means abstracting core logic to a separate function that you can call in your main function. The reason for this is it looks a lot cleaner and it mimics real life coding practices. So doing that is an easy way to get brownie points with the interviewer. And the final tip I have for this video is to leverage your interviewer during the interview. People tend to view coding interviews as a solo endeavor, you against the interviewer. But what if I told you that wasn't true? You see, interviewers actually want to help you and it's not uncommon for them to do so. They will give you hints, but you have to be leading the conversation. The best way to think about it is the interview itself is a car and you are driving the car while the interviewer is the passenger. You lead the conversation, but that doesn't mean the interviewer can't chime in every now and then. But the thing is, you don't ask for hints directly. If you're stuck, you can try clearly explaining your current solution to them. By explaining what you currently have, they'll drop hints to try and nudge you in the right direction. So when the interviewer speaks, make sure you pay attention because they are trying to help you. I'm confident that if you implement these tips and practice consistently, you will significantly increase your interview performance and chances of receiving an offer. But remember, at the end of the day, interviewing is just a numbers game. No matter how many rejections you get, you have to keep pushing forward. All it takes is one yes. So keep going until you hear that yes. That being said, none of this matters if you don't practice. And LeetCode is one of the best resources to do that. If you're looking for ways to improve your problem solving abilities on LeetCode, then do me a favor and check out this video. In any case, I hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one.